Hey, it's Chris. Welcome back. So today we need to sort out a very important thing. The two ways you can go for this hobby. Visual astronomy versus astrophotography. I do admit right away, I wanted to do this video for a long while, but recently Dylan did a very cool sketch where he, <laughs> he just nailed it. It's a big laugh and you definitely should check it out, though I think it's especially funny for people already into this hobby. So I kept close to Dylan's sketch, but explaining the two ways to go for this hobby in a deeper way while doing so, okay? Why is it important? Because many people start this tour saying, yeah, I want to do some visual astronomy observations and from time to time just occasionally do some deep sky object imaging. And yeah, that's, that's just not the way it works. Visual astronomy and astrophotography are two very different approaches to this subject. So let's start with visual astronomy. Disclaimer, I'm team imaging, so my view on this is kind of biased, okay? Visual astronomers need, of course, a good quality scope. Not this one. I just wanted to emphasize that you don't need a big and rock-solid motorized EQ mount for a visual. And, as photographers too, their optical components must be quality best. Visuals always talk about eyepieces, that seems to be quite a thing. Yeah, and if they don't talk about eyepieces, they talk about optical diagonals or about eyepieces or eyepieces, I don't know, all the time. Then visual astronomy is mainly about your most important piece of optical equipment, your eyes. And the eyes must adapt to the dark. Lights, laptops, smartphone screens, devil's work and need to be discarded. Your eyes need rest to adapt to the dark, to settle down. After this you try to search for the brightest objects up there. Planets, moon, star fields and bright DSOs. With all the objects, never overestimate what you're gonna see. Your head is full of rendered Hubble images, but in reality planets are blobby blobs and DSOs are faint and indistinct. This is a Hubble image of the Orion Nebula. And this is what you might expect, faint nebulosity around a central core. This is Andromeda. And this is what you might spot through a scope with your eyes, a bright core and a faint structure of the inner arms around it. Everything you will see through a scope is black and white, because the color cells of your eye are way too unsensitive to capture information. Only the sensitive black and white cells in your retina are of any use for visual astronomy, so there will be no bright colors visible through your eyepiece. And watching planets through your scope is mainly about patience. Your eyes must be trained to see small structures, ice caps or valleys on Mars or faint ring structures around Saturn. That needs time. I was told that you need a quarter of an hour to recognize the first structures, and lots of time more to let your brain add up all the impressions you collect over time. So visual astronomy is all about patience and perseverance. Like looking at art, it may need time to add everything together. But on the other hand, there's that extraordinary experience. If you observe light from deep space objects like distant galaxies, the photons, the light from those objects, traveled for millions of years, undisturbed. No atom, no nothing was in their way. A direct link of nothingness between you and the faint and ancient object. And after traveling millions of years with the speed of light emitted when the dinosaurs walked on Earth, the photons will hit your very eye. If I think about the distance and the present of the past right in this moment, that makes me shiver, and that's a northworthy thing to do. So you spend hours on top of a dune watching the sea during holidays or staring at paintings for ages being amazed by their beauty? Just for yourself and your joy? Well, then maybe visual astronomy is something for you. Then on the other hand there's astrophotography, and it's mainly like this. <coughs>
So you like technical stuff or high precision working? Are you like me? First gulp, first thing I did, hold my phone in front of the eyepiece in order to take an image, posting it to all my friends to share my excitement? So maybe you're team astrophotography, who knows? Team Astro thereby itself is parted into DSO imaging and planetary and moon imaging. The techniques vary heavily, but we will cover that later on. So now you know the two teams, naturally they are crossover artists, but the border between the two of them holds up pretty well, most people would call themselves the one or the other. And both cams do require different equipment. I wouldn't use my motorized mount with all the software and cables just to jump outside to gaze Venus when there is a two minute gap in the clouds. Nor can you take incredible images with a practical and transportable Alt-S travel mount, neither of this will work well. So at a certain point the hardware will diverge, and you should know that in beforehand. And yeah, that's it for the day. Whatever you do, no matter which way you choose, never stop gazing at the heavens above. They are likely the most mysterious thing we can lay our eyes on. And so as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.